Okay, so, you know, back in the day when I was doing um, my practicum as a, as a clinical master's student, I was doing more work in schools with learning assistance classes and kids that were dysregulated and often, you know, really complex diagnoses with lots of very deep behavioral problems from trauma and complex trauma and, <clears throat> and neurological challenges like FASD and <clears throat> many things. And they asked me to be the guest artist one spring break and, and so I was thrilled to come in and do the Festival of Life and Learning and Art, Life and Art. And so what was so fascinating, though, is to see how the, the structure of school itself is just such a soul crusher and such a creativity crusher and remains so, even though, you know, at that point I was a young adult and <clears throat> had been in school many years ago and am now an older adult and school is very, very long ago, but it's still the same soul crushing environment, you know, working with people that get so caught up in the rules and so stressed out when the rules aren't followed and so brittle. Um, you know, what struck me in that time was that I, we were doing a mural with the kids. I don't remember exactly the point of what kind of thing we were doing. Let's, it's the early 90s. Who knows, were we doing body tracing or hands and collective mural making with all the kids? And my biggest concern was that they have fun and that they experience their own creative impulse and allow and are allowed to follow it. Choose their colors, choose their materials, choose their, uh, you know, their, their scale. <clears throat> and there was so much blowback, so much pushing to be contained, small. What are the rules? How do we stay? They're making a mess. And, and I'm like, yes, they're supposed to be making a mess. This is, you know, the festival of life and learning and joy, you know, how can you not make a mess? If you are so worried about being contained in a box that other people define for you and following the rules, my only rule was that they had fun and that at the end of the day, nothing ethical, immoral, or um, dangerous occurred. So everyone was safe, everyone was alive and well at the end of the day. And okay, so I did my job. But wow, the unpacking of of layers of oppression and, you know, needing it to be symmetrical and tidy and neat. And that's what creativity is, is finding a product that you can do on the craft channel. No, not for me. And not for helping people unleash their creative fire and relight their spark and find their impulse. And it's all wonderful if you are one of these people that is particularly organized in your ability to stay organized and tidy and build, you know, smudgeless architectural blueprints or, uh, you know, uh, amazing detailed pointillism paintings where your studio looks like it's you know, a clinical laboratory sterilized, that's fantastic and I'm really quite frankly jealous. But at the same time, that's not a lot of people in their creative impulse and we just need to stop shaming the mess. So this is me coming out and, and owning the mess and what I like to encourage clients to do is create ugly pages. And you know, I see the perfectionist surface so often and believe me, it lives within me absolutely. <clears throat> And that's why I've developed this ugly page system where it's like, no, Norma, you're not making something. You're not making it beautiful. You're not making it attractive. You're not making it balanced. This is the ugly page and you're just outletting tension, stress, uh, an idea, an emotion, an energy, um, thoughtlessness, just experiencing the, the joy of thoughtlessness and moving and being present in your body and just creating the ugliness and, and it will, it will lead you to beauty because it has to, it's just a natural flow of the river following the banks and following the containment. And really the page isn't even the containment. I, you know, we'll get it on the table, we'll get it on the under sheet, we'll get it on the floor. And then you know what? You clean up. That's why everyone just needs to stop getting freaking stressed out about the mess. The mess is our salvation. The mess is the bliss and bliss is going to save us. It's the moment of 
our aliveness, our erotic impulse just unleashing itself in the joy, the pure joy of our own aliveness in this one rare precious moment and we're not guaranteed tomorrow. And we have now and make that mess. And if your ugly page is the last thing you do, that's not what people are going to remember you for. They're going to remember you for your bliss.